I'm Robin Nodge, in case um, you haven't met me before. Uh, if you haven't, you'd like to meet me, come and say hello. Those of you who've met me before probably don't want to say hello. Um, so it's very nice to be here. I'm, I'm actually um, at a different school now. I've moved from Cranbrook. I'm now doing um, a more senior position, and it's sort of taken me away from maths a bit. I, I still teach one maths class, but I'm looking after um, the whole pastoral welfare of, of the school and the uh, well-being framework. Um, just as a quick warm-up activity uh, uh, while we wait for a few people to come in the room. Um, so you go into a shop and there's a 25% discount on all marked prices, special sale. Uh, but there's also a 15% sales tax. Um, what would you rather when you buy something? Would you rather they do the discount first or the sales tax? Would you like them to do the discount then put the sales tax on or is it better if they do the sales tax and then the Which discount? Better, yeah. Okay, well we'll have a vote and, and obviously you're maths teachers, uh, but hands up you reckon probably sales tax first? Okay, uh, how many reckon that the discount should be applied first? Okay, how many don't think it makes any difference? Wow, and how many didn't put that? <laughs> and how many didn't put their hand up because there's a good reason because you've got a broken hand or it's really bad. <laughs> oh, we have one! <laughs> Round of applause, thank you. Um, now that's really interesting because you're maths teachers. Um, but I, I quite often do that with my students. And, and of course the way we teach percentage um, sometimes is a little bit formulaic. Um, we get them to do something over 100 and add it on and take it off and all that. But really what you're doing when you're taking off 25% is you're multiplying by 0.75 because you're finding 75%. So whatever number times 0.75, when you're putting sales tax on, you're adding 15%, what you're doing is the operation multiplying by 1.15. So basically all you're doing, you're either multiplying by a number, 0.75, and then multiplying by another number, 1.15, or you're doing that the other way around. And of course, uh, the commutative property of multiplication uh, is that it doesn't make any difference which way around you do it. But what's nice about that, I mean, I was actually quite surprised that only this lady at the front was prepared to put her hand up saying it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, and in fact, if you multiply 0 0.75 by 1.15, you get the equivalent discount, which is, I don't know, it's not, what, what would most people think it would be? 25% off, 15% on? Yeah, most people would say it's the equivalent of a 10% discount, but it's actually not. It's like 13 point something, or I think. Um, so you can just work it out by multiplying those two numbers together, and that will give you the equivalent uh, discount. But you see, that's, that's also, you know, this is sort of year seven level, really, or year eight or nine, possibly. And I don't mean that patronizingly. I mean that from the point of view of actually enriching the understanding of percentage and proof. Because what I just did was a proof without writing anything down. I probably would write it down with, with students. Um, anyway, so that was a bit of a warm up um, exercise. The point of this whole presentation, really, is to engage with students in the maths classroom which is a combination of um, kind of entertainment, hopefully, and um, sort of ideas for really kind of getting them enthused. Um, anyway, without more ado. Oh, that was supposed to be happening the whole time. Anyway, there we go. Uh, so a few maths jokes to start us off, I think. Um, I don't know whether you've seen these kind of things on the internet, but they're quite good. You can't see uh, that one over there. I'm confused as to why I need to put my cake in the oven at 120 degrees, and that one should be self-explanatory. Um, there's another one which I like to tell to mathematicians, which is how many mathematicians does it take to change a light bulb? 0.9 recurring? Okay. If you don't get that, ask a friend. Um, now, I like to vary things in the classroom. I think that part of actually um, kind of remaining fresh and keeping students motivated and engaged is about reinventing and creating. Teaching is a very creative pursuit and maths can be too. Here's an example. Um, I had a, 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 the only class I teach actually, the uh, a year 11 standard level class. They're lovely kids, lovely kids. They work really hard, they listen really attentively, they're very engaged. But the moment I ask them to do any work, they just chat away and it's really 
I don't see any passion to say, this is what I did with them. And I'm not saying you should listen up. This session today isn't about getting super fit. It's a bit it's Mr. G. Super bright. It's about intensity. Okay, it's something that I believe you guys lack in the advanced classroom. It's about changing your expectation of work. Okay, so that you approach classroom work, you approach maths in the same way as you approach physical kind of um, challenges. Okay, and I have stations for you, four of which are physical, two of which are maths. So what we'll be doing is we'll be doing physical, physical, maths, physical, physical, maths. And the, the physical stations are going to be working for three minutes, yeah. and then have one minute break, and then three minutes, one minute break. Two, one. to try and engage with the metacognition of what was going on in the classroom and get them to think about, I've seen virtually every single one of these students playing rugby or playing netball or in some other capacity um, and I've seen how hard, how focused, how passionate they are and I just don't get why that doesn't translate to the maths classroom. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to actually talk about that specifically. It was just one period, first half of a double period, then I got them to actually do a little bit of um, feedback um, and then we got on with some maths. So it wasn't that this was going to improve their maths dramatically, um, but it was interesting to, to see what they actually said. And, and I gave an, an, an analogy as well, that it's a little bit like um, when you're doing maths. It's not that it's important to finish the exercise off, it's just important that the quality of the work and the, what you're doing in that session is, is really kind of uh, high quality and focus. A um, little bit like, uh, I can remember when I had a personal trainer for the first time, and he said, you know, I had to do three times ten reps. And on the eighth rep of the third set, I couldn't go on. And I sort of felt that was a failure. And then he explained, no, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to actually exhaust the muscle. And we've succeeded. The, the point in having the three times ten reps is, is a goal. It doesn't mean that if you don't achieve it, you've, you've failed in what you're trying to do. So it's the same thing with maths, same thing with doing exercises in class. Um, these were the worksheets that I gave out, just if you're interested to know what they were doing. Um, they're fairly standard, it was just uh, sine rule and, uh, and cosine rule, 
drill questions uh, and also the other station which was maths station was the uh, Australian maths competition questions. Um, so here's uh, some of the feedback. Um, I particularly like the second one, uh, this one. By having the physical aspect, honestly I was too tired to open my mouth or be fidgety during the maths. I therefore found it effective in obtaining focus. But uh, there were, you know, there were some others saying I, I felt I could not think well enough even though I was focused. But it wasn't, the point wasn't that by doing the physical exercise their maths would improve. It was really just to be thinking about their engagement.